Hey guys, Rusty here, and recently on the patch 9.1.5 PTR, Blizzard has changed several Antorus raid bosses, allowing even on Mythic every single class to solo the raid now, assuming you have the proper amount of gear, obviously. Now, this is mainly changes for bosses like A&R and Agamar, as well as several others, that were causing players not being able to solo the raid. It's, those were just difficult bosses, especially for classes with low mobility. Now, there are a couple things we need to actually go over before we actually get into the guide. So, if you're just here for the bosses or directions on how to get to the bosses, timestamps in the video, as usual, where you can skip to the bosses to see how they are done. Now, first things first, rewards. What's the point of this? Obviously, you got the Red Scythe from Argus Neon Maker. The Fellhound still drops the uh, the Antorin Charhound, of course, although you could get that in the other difficulties. And the main reward, the one everyone wants, the Shackled Urzel from Argus Neon Maker Mythic. One of the best looking mounts in the game. Absolutely love it. So, a big point of criticism for my other solo guides, by the way, was that I didn't really show directions how to get to the bosses, and I'm going to be including that more in the video very quickly. Not every single one, because some are straightforward, but some can be a little confusing, so I will start including that. Now, one more thing to go over before we actually get into the bosses is simply that this is a Legion raid, so you can use the Heart of Azeroth from Battle for Azeroth, if you have it, it is a major DPS increase. Things like Blood of the Enemy Major is really, really good. I definitely recommend using that if you have that available to you. So, with that being said, let's actually get right into killing some bosses. So, first things first, the raid entrance to Antorus the Burning Throne is located in the Antoran Waste over on Argus. So, head over there. You want to head over to that little fell ravine, kind of. And basically, there's going to be a hole in the wall with the raid entrance. Obviously, make sure to set the raid difficulty to mythic. And then, to get to Garathi, Worldbreaker, the first boss, it's pretty straightforward. You just clear all the trash follow the path, and he will spawn right in front of you. So the first boss, Garothi Worldbreaker, is a bigger joke than changing a picture of a sexy lady into some fruit. So you're basically, guys, I'm going to summarize it for you. If you're super geared, just go in there and kill him, all right? Now, there, to be more realistic, there are two mechanics of note that can be just a little more annoying. The first one is going to be the fell bombardment. You go with the debuff on you. The boss will shoot these little green bombs at you. That'll shoot you up in the air. You might just end up really high up, and you'll just take some fall damage. Nothing really too risky about Just make sure to heal yourself up. Now, when the boss... You can actually bug out the boss, so this is obviously the most important part. When you damage him to certain health points where he comes down to the ground, you have the Annihilator and Decimator cannons you can kill. Just make sure not to kill them both at the same time, as it can bug out the boss the second time, and then you won't be able to kill him. Just make sure to kill one the first time, and then obviously one the second time, and then you can just go in there. Kill Garothi Rollbreaker. He has always been a super easy boss. Just delete him from existence. Let's move on. Now, the next boss we're going to be taking a look at is going to be the Fellhounds of Sargeras. So, after you kill Garothi Rollbreaker, just keep following the path until you eventually end up where I am, where the path split off to the right and left, and you could also go straight ahead. Now, keep going straight ahead until you eventually end up at the Fellhounds of Sargeras. You'll have Fart and Shat just standing there. Do note, they can sometimes piss off somewhere else and do their own thing. Don't worry, they will eventually come back. Now, this boss is another super, super easy boss. You could even do this on a little bit of an undergeared character if you're farming the mount or transmog. There are two mechanics that you do need to know about, though. And the first one is that on Mythic, the bosses do not share HP, meaning they need to die around the same time as each other. So, basically, just kill them evenly and you'll be fine there. Now, the second one is going to be Weight of Darkness. Now, real quick... If you are geared enough, you should be able to DPS and kill this boss before you even see it. However, again, if you're farming this on another geared character for a mount or something, for the mount or something like a transmog, you might get this mechanic. And that's essentially a purple circle is going to spawn around you. And when it goes off, you're going to be feared for 20 seconds, meaning you won't be able to heal yourself, obviously. So before this happens, just make sure you top yourself off, heal yourself the full HP, and then right before it goes off, use every defensive cooldown you have. If your class has a way to break fears, you don't even have to worry about it. But if your class doesn't, like a DH, for example, just use whatever defensive cooldown you have, like Blur and Darkness for DH, and you'll be more than okay. And worst case scenario too, if your class has um, a tank spec, do it as a tank, and you'll be perfectly fine. 
Felhans and Sarkaris done, let's move on to Antoran High Command. But first things first, how do you get to the Antoran High Command after Felhans and Sargeras? Well, that's simple. Just head back to the area where the paths split off, and instead of going straight this time, you're going to make a right, and there's going to be two more paths. You're going to want to go the one to the left, clear the initial trash right there, and a transport, basically pad, will spawn that you could click on, and then from there, it's straightforward. Just keep following the path, a lot of paths, until you eventually get to the elevator. Fun fact about this elevator, if you stand under it, it'll friggin' crush you. Hilarious, Blizzard. I absolutely love it. Just take the elevator up, and you'll eventually end up at the Antorin High Command. Very, very simple to get there. Just make that left when you're going to that path. So, Antorin High Command. This boss is, I mean, guys, I'm just gonna summarize this for you right now, and you can probably just move on to the next one. You're gonna go in there, you're gonna pull your pants down, whip out whatever you have. I don't care if you're a man or a woman or a can of soup. Whip out whatever you have, slap the boss with it, and it's done. It is really that easy, guys. There's not too much to note. Just don't stand on the mines on the ground. The, the shock grenade will stun you for two seconds. Super easy. Just kill the adds. If they spawn, you can cleave them down. I mean, there's really not too much to note. I, I guess the only dangerous part is if you're doing this on an undergeared character. The tank debuff, uh, the claws, the red debuff that you get. Forgot the exact name of it, but it's, it's the only debuff you get. The one that stacks up and up and up and increases your physical damage taken. If you are an undergeared character, that can kill you when it gets to super high stacks. So just use defensive cooldowns. Or if you're really struggling with that, if you're that undergeared, you shouldn't even be doing this in the first place. You should be getting more gear. So this boss is really easy. Just go in there and kill it. Let's move on. So the next boss we're going to look at is going to be Portal Keeper Hazabel. So just head, just backtrack until you eventually get back to where the path split. And instead of making that left to go to the Antor and High Command, make a right, just clear any trash that you pull there, and there's going to be a portal there. Go ahead and click it, and then you'll end up at the room where Portal Keeper Hazabel is, and also where a &R is to the left. Just go straight ahead, and you'll eventually get to the Portal Keeper. And she is also another fairly easy boss, guys. So go ahead and pull her. What's going to happen is that certain health percentages, she's going to activate the platforms that are located around her room and spawn an ad there. Now, if you don't kill this ad, it'll pulse damage. Now, lucky for us, this damage is next to nothing, so we can completely ignore them. This is another one, guys, where you go in there, slap the boss around, just, just go in there and kill her. Now, the only thing that might kill you are going to be the green lines on the ground. If you end up getting hit by those, it can knock you off the platform. So, simple enough, move out of the green lines. The rest of the damage isn't too bad. If you're under gear, just make sure to move out of the giant purple circle that spawns on the platform. You could kill the adds that are up. They have a very, very low amount of health, so you can cleave them down. There's no reason to actually switch them and target them. And worst case, guys, if you guys really are struggling with the damage, especially if you're on an undergeared character, this might help you. You can take the portals up to the platforms and kill the ads up there, but I really recommend not doing it. It's a waste of time, and honestly, it probably might just make the fight harder, even if you are super undergeared. Really, just go in there and kill the boss. Simple enough, right? Let's move on to everyone's favorite boss, ANR. So again, first things first, how do you actually get to ANR? Just head back to the where you came through the portal to get to Portal Keeper Hazabel. Instead of going straight, you're just gonna make that one left there. Make sure to kill the fell guards to actually activate her portal. And then you just click on that, and then you'll end up at Elunaria, which is basically ANR Sanctuary. Just follow the path from there, and you'll end up at the boss room. Now, ANR was one of the major bosses that was recently nerfed or changed to make it soulable by even classes with low mobilities. I'm looking at you, DKs. Sorry. But even with classes with super low mobility can do it now. Obviously, the more mobility you have, it's still easier. Now, there is a specific strategy you need to do in order to make this a complete joke. Wowhead does have a written version of this on their site if you'd rather that. But if you'd rather video form, here you go. But first things first, guys, there are three things you need to know about before we actually get into the strategy. The first one is the extra action button, which is the surge of life. When you click it, it'll shoot you straight up in the air, and essentially you'll slowly glide down. While you're in the air, though, if you reactivate it and click on wherever you want to go, it'll shoot you wherever you want to go. This will let you move around the room much easier, although it does have a 30 second cooldown. The second thing you want to know about are going to be the jump platforms, which are just spread around the room. Essentially, they'll just shoot you either down or up, depending where you are standing. Again, another handy tool to help you navigate the platforms, especially for your lower mobility classes. You're going to want to use those to your advantage. And the third and final thing you need to know about for Mythic ANR is going to be the Paraxis spawns. When the Paraxis comes out where you go in the ship, this will eventually be required. Four flowers, like little flower looking things, are going to spawn behind the boss. 
to get onto the Praxis, you just simply walk onto them and it'll teleport you onto the ship. So, with that being said, let's actually get into how you do the boss and the specific strategy to start it. Again, there's a written version on Wowhead if you would prefer that, but here's your video form. Now, first things first, talk to ANR to actually start the boss fight, and from there, you're going to want to head over to the middle spawn area, basically just follow where I go in the video. You can use your extra action button to get there. Now, you're just going to want to chill there and kill all the fell guards that spawn, and more importantly, the fell infused destructor that spawns, basically the giant robot. Those things, if not let, if they're not engaged in combat, melee combat, will destroy the boss. So those are your priority. Kill those fell infused destructors. They absolutely need to die. Now, once that dies, you just want to wait there for a little bit longer, and eventually a bunch of fell hounds are going to spawn. Just go ahead, kill them off. Once all the fell hounds are dead turn around using your extra action button get to the upper platform by the way no if you miss the upper platform with your extra action button no big deal just use the jump pad that is waiting there now up there there's going to be another fell infused destructor which once again is going to be your priority to kill go ahead kill off that destructor as well as the fell lord that spawns there now once you do that jump back down on the lower platform you'll see a bunch of fell hounds running to the boss Quickly kill only one of them, you only have to kill one, and this will trigger a life force which will destroy all other ads around the platform. And at the same time, the Paraxis has been activated. So you need to book it over back to the boss, again, using your extra action button or the jump pads to get there, as well as your own movement speed abilities. Go to the flowers and just run on one of them and this will teleport you up to the Paraxis. Very quickly kill the ad in the middle. Now, after you do that, there's going to be these four crystals around the room that you need to click to actually deactivate the Paraxis. Again, use your own movement speed abilities to go and click the crystals in each corner of the ship. You can even use stuff like speed potions to help you out here if you're a lower mobility class. You should have more than enough time to click these crystals. Now, once you do, just simply head out of the ship back towards the ANR platform and then basically the hardest part of the fight from that point guys is pretty much done now head over to your lower platform spawn area and you're gonna have another fell infused destructor spawn alongside that fell infused destructor you'll have two fell lords and a ton of fell hounds that will spawn now at this point guys it it's gonna get a little hectic it might seem like things are falling apart you can see in the video i actually panicked a little bit because i thought the fell hounds were going to escape along with the fell lords if that happens guys no big deal if they reach the boss you have plenty of time to go and kill them your priority is to first kill that fell infused destructor after that kill the two fell lords and then chase down the fell hounds worst case scenario they reach the boss guys just kill them all of them off especially the ones that reach the boss you need to kill every single one to have the right amount of life force percentage to end the fight once you do that head back to the lower platform spawn and then you're just going to want to afk there until you eventually get the final i believe it's fell or not fell lords but the fell guards that spawn just basically kill off anything that spawns there and the boss will end congratulations you have defeated anr mythic it just takes a little bit of practice to get used to the strategy guys but it's very very easy once you've done it a few times i did that on my first try again there is footage of dk's uh warlocks doing this your your lower mobility class is priests doing this Every single class can do this now. The more gear you, have, gear you have, the much easier it is, obviously, because you could kill the ads much quicker, but even, like, an even slightly undergeared character can do this, no problem. This fight was always more about the lack of mobility than the gear issue. So, with that being said, you've completed some Mythic a &R. Let's move on to the next boss. So once you've defeated the first five bosses of the raid, the next section will open up for you guys, unless you have the raid skip. So first things first, head back to where the area splits off or where the path split off. Instead of going straight or over to the right, you want to make that left and just keep following the path down there and you'll eventually come along a teleporter next to all the major NPCs. Click on the teleporter pad there and have it take you over to the exhaust. And from there you have Iminar the Soul Hunter. Soul Hunter or Soul Binder? Soul Hunter. You're just going to go straight until he eventually spawns, and then you can run back and fight him. Now, Iminar is another super, super easy boss. There is kind of one mechanic that you might want to know. Now, about, about every 20%, Iminar will go to one end of the platform to the other, and you have to cross the bridge there. Now, there's going to be traps and stuff, and as well as balls, because everyone loves balls, that spawn. 
Now, first things first, should note, don't run along the outer edges of the bridge, um, basically where the fire is. You'll gain a stacking debuff for every stack. It will increase your damage taken by 100%. Essentially, you'll die. So don't run along the edges. Now, there's going to be the first, on the first set of bridge, there's going to be the two green traps. The first green trap is going to be like these little bomb looking things. If you stand on them, you'll just get knocked back and you'll gain a stacking debuff that'll increase your, I think it's nature damage taken. So try and avoid them if you can, but those bombs, not a big deal. The more annoying ones for the green traps are going to be the, cir the green circles. If you stand on them, you'll be stunned for a short amount of time. It's not the end of the world if you get hit by them, but it is just a little bit annoying. So do your best to avoid the green circle traps as best as you can. The green orbs, basically the orbs will just hurt you and then some of them will slow you down. So try and avoid them as much as possible. But again, if you get hit by them, it's really not a big deal. It just slows down your kill a little bit. So just run across the platform, interrupt the boss. Now on the fire side, he'll spawn swirlies, he'll spawn ships. Something to note the ships, the line, if it hits you, it does knock you back a little bit. And if you're by the edge, you can get knocked off the platform. Man, the amount of times that happened on progression. So just don't get knocked off the platform there. Now, when you go back, there's going to be the red traps. There's going to be the red circles on the ground, the shrapnel, where if you stand on them, you'll gain a stack in debuff with a dot. Try and avoid getting too many stacks of that. The red lines, basically, they'll just cause an explosion. It's just a burst of damage. Not that big of a deal. So, really, this boss, guys, is just keep going back and forth, interrupting him too, and just keep going back and forth until he eventually dies. Avoid as many traps as possible. There's going to be a lot of them, so it's inevitable that you will eventually hit some traps. You're, the best thing you can do is avoid the green circles, though, since they stun you, and that's really annoying. Just whatever you do, guys, don't run along the outer edges of the bridge. I tested it out just to see how much damage you do. Two stacks, even two stacks is doing an okay amount of damage. Like, you get a high amount of those, you'll die. So, just go back and forth and kill the boss. Let's move on to Kingaroth. So, guys, to get to Kingaroth from Iminar, go straight. Amazing work, champion. Cadgar would be proud. So, Kingaroth, he's another fairly easy boss. There is one mechanic that you might kind of have to worry about and another one that will help you kill the boss quicker. Now, first things first, the Forging Strike, guys, which is the tank debuff. Um, the first phase one, you don't have to worry about it too much, but later on in the fight, it can stack up pretty high. And as it gets to high stacks, it can start doing a decent chunk of damage. So just make sure you use your defensive cooldowns and you're obviously keeping yourself healed up to full One that is happening. Now, the main mechanic of the fight is that on a timer, the boss will eventually go immune to damage and will spawn three robots around the room. Now, at the start of the phase, they will take an increased amount of damage, basically going down and down and down until eventually they don't take that increased amount of damage anymore. They'll take normal damage. Now, basically, you're just going to want to kill these robots, guys, starting kill as many as you can while they're taking the increased amount of damage. If they activate, though, not that big of a deal, because as you kill these, these will actually damage the boss. So, there you go. That's pretty much King Roth. I wouldn't worry too much about anything else. The red crystals on the ground, just don't stand on them. Even if you hit the bombs rolling around the room, this ain't current progression anymore, so don't worry about it. They don't do that much damage. Just kill the robots. Use your defensives at high stacks of forging strikes, and the boss will eventually fall over. Now, once you defeat King Roth, we're going to head over to Bower Mothras. Now, another transport pad will spawn once you actually again defeat King Roth. Just click that, and that will take you to the Burning Throne. Click the Burning Throne, and you'll end up over there, which is basically, you know, like a little red area. Just go straight ahead. You're going to want to kill the name mob there, and the doors ahead will open up. Just keep going straight again, and there's going to be a little hole in the ground. Jump in that, and look. There's the Dreadlord who had his wing torn off, standing right in front of you. What an awesome looking Dreadlord model, by the way. Absolutely love his model. Now, Vary Mothras was another boss that has been changed uh, in patch 9.1.5. Essentially, the main mechanic, which was that reduced your healing taken by 100%, has been removed. So, you can now heal yourself the full. This boss, guys, th just kill him. That's it. Just, just kill him. Now, there is going to be an ad that spawns. It's very low HP. You can cleave it down. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Again, the main mechanic that reduced your healing done by 100% has been removed. So you just go in there and kill him now. Simple enough. Let's move on to Covenant Shavara. So once you actually down Vary Mathras, just turn around and follow the stairs up. Just keep climbing up and you'll eventually end up at the Covenant of Shavara. Quick note, you can actually do Coven before you do Vary Mathras, by the way, if you prefer that for Transmog. Now, Coven is really easy, and I debated for a long time going over every single mechanic, and that's really just not necessary, guys. It's mostly just a tank and spank boss. You go in there and kill it. The Titan adds the only one of note are going to be the Amon Thul adds. When they spawn, they'll just put a dot on you after they finish a cast. If you're a little undergeared, I definitely recommend killing them off. 
the Norganon adds with the purple circles around them, the way they work is they will be immune to damage and they'll just walk around the room for 30 seconds they're immune to damage. Now, normally you would take a ton of damage from the circles, but I stood in them for a long, long time and they barely did anything to me. Even the other Titan adds really didn't do too much. So cleave them down, kill them if you want, but they're really not that big of a deal. You don't have to hard focus them. And the only thing to really note, guys, is that when the Frost Lady comes down, she'll basically just really slow you a lot. It can be annoying. Again, it's not a big deal, though, because the other Titan ads don't really do anything. So the, it, the slows are really just not that bad. The only thing that might be a little annoying is that she will put an Absorb Shield on you that can stun you if you don't heal through it. However, the stun isn't that big of a deal. Just use the defensive before it goes off. So again, guys, this is really just another boss where you could go in there and kill them. The bosses do share HP, by the way, so you can cleave them down. The quicker you cleave them, the more damage you do, right? So the quicker the boss will go. Go in there, kill the bosses. That way, we get to move on to Agrimar. So after you down the Coven of Shavara to get to Agrimar, just head back up to the stairs that are there and just keep going straight as if you were following the original path to get the Varimathras, and you'll see Agamar just standing over by the Argus. World Soul, just chilling, looking cool. So Agamar has some major changes done to him in patch 9.1.5. The mainly big two big ones have to do with the flame run. One being the giant knockback that would knock you off the platform. That's no longer the case. It is much shorter, so you won't go flying. Can still knock you off if you're staying by the edge, though, so don't do that. And also where the boss would super buff himself, if not enough people soak the flame run, which wouldn't be because you're soloing, that has been removed, so you won't flat out get one shot, unless you're super undergeared, because you can still die to the Tasha like technique. So let's go over that right now, the most important mechanic. The boss, during a Tasha like technique, will do five things. He'll do two foe breakers, which is the basically the giant tank hit, two flame runs, which is the knockback, and also a searing tempest. Let's start with that. The searing tempest, just a giant orange circle. Just run out of it. If you stand in it, you'll get disoriented. Not a deal. Just simply run out of it. Now, the first foe breaker and the first flame run won't do too much. Foe breaker will do a decent chunk of damage, right? Not that much to worry about. Flame run again is just a knockback. Just make sure you don't get knocked off the edge by standing next to the edge. Now, the second foe breaker and second flame run of every technique will still do a ton of damage, especially that second foe breaker, breaker, which is the tank hit. So make sure you use some kind of defensive, make sure you're full health before those go off and just heal yourself up. Those can still gear you or, wow, can still kill you. So if you're under geared, that's what I meant to say, that stays in the video. If you are still under geared, you can still get one shot by these abilities. So just make sure you use some type of defensive during the again, the second foe breaker and second flame run of every taste like technique. Those do a ton of damage. Besides that, guys, the boss is pretty straightforward. Just don't stand on circles on the ground in the later phases. And the during the intermissions, you want to kill the two big ads. Just let the small ads run into the boss. They will do a decent chunk of damage. Just heal yourself up. Heal yourself through to that. No point in kiting or killing them. Just let them run into the boss. And just avoid the meteors on the ground, the swirlies on the ground that spawn in the intermission. As again, they can knock you off the platform. Now, the only other thing to really note is that during the third and final burn, I definitely recommend saving your DPS cooldowns for this, is that the Foe Breaker does stun you, all right? So just make sure you use a defensive when you are stunned or before you get stunned so you actually survive through it. Again, mainly that second Foe Breaker and second Flame Run that does the most damage. Also, if you are super geared, you can actually DPS the boss quick enough where you actually skip the Tasha Lack technique, which was the original strategy before it was nerfed. So... Just survive the second foe breaker, second flame run of your Tasha Lock technique, and Agamar will fall, fall over, and you can head over to Argus Dion Maker. Just talk to Magni, chilling on the platform, and he will teleport you to the seat of the Pantheon for the Argus fight. Let's go. So overall, Argus is a super, super easy fight. There are a couple things to know, though. Phase 1 is a tiny DPS race, as the boss will be doing an ability called Sweeping Scythe, which puts a permanent debuff on you, essentially it permanent if you're soloing, right? Unless you have a pet class or something or another player. This will increase its damage done at every single debuff until it eventually one-shots you, so you need to push the boss to 70% HP before it one-shots you, which is very, very easy to do, by the way. Save your DPS cooldowns for the last phase, though. You're gonna want them for there, because that is an even bigger DPS race. Now, once you get him to 70% HP, oh, by the way, don't stand on the black stuff on the ground from Kona Death, right? Simple enough, obvious. Doesn't do that much damage, though. 
Um, just once you push them to 70% HP, basically a storm will spawn around the room. Clear all the stuff. You also drop stacks of your sweeping scythe. Phase two is a complete joke because the titans around the room will super buff you. Basically increases your max HP by 100%. Nothing can kill you guys at that point. You could stand in almost anything you want. You would have to try your app. It's probably harder to die than not to die at that point. So phase two, just DPS them down to 40%. Once you do, we'll go through a super awesome epic. Probably the best transition in any boss fight ever. Really, really, really cool. Like I love progressing this boss just to watch that intermission. So he'll kill you. You'll be dead on the ground. Just wait for the bush to spawn out of ANR's bush. You'll eventually be able to release your spirit. Now the Shaw adds there, if you run into them, basically you'll get knocked up in the air and you'll get slowed. Really not ideal. Don't run into them. Just run into the tree and you will respawn. The boss will be doing a cast called End of All Things. Just make sure you interrupt it because if he gets that cast off, well, he does what he says. He ends you. You die. So just interrupt the cast and pull the boss to the edge. Now, pop all your DPS cooldowns. Use drums if your class doesn't have a lust, potions. You got to DPS the boss because now the sweeping scythe debuff actually is permanent. So it will eventually just kill you. Now, besides that, there will be sides around the room. The way they work is one half will fill up, second half will fill up. Just honestly, guys, just stand by the edge and hope for the best. There's really not, don't, e don't even worry about it, guys. All your damage has to be put into the boss because, again, that sweeping scythe will, will just one-shot you. Now, the adds that spawn, the apocalypse modules, I recommend not focus focusing them. Just cleave them down and just move out of the pools that they spawn. Because again, Sweeping Scythe will kill you. And by the way, every stack of Sweeping Scythe you get will increase the amount of red balls that spawn around the room, which is just more damage when they touch you. So if you get 12 stacks of Sweeping Scythe, 12 balls will spawn, which is a lot of damage. So as long as you all use all your DPS cooldowns in Phase 3 and you're properly geared, you will be able to kill Argus before it is ever an issue. And of course, he is the one that drops him out. Congratulations, you have soloed all of Mythic and Taurus, the Burning Throne. Hope you guys get your mount. Hope you guys get your red scythe. This was definitely a fun raid to solo. I really feel the changes make it much more enjoyable, especially for those with lower mobility. ANR was, I'm going to be honest with you guys, it was complete BS that, <laughs> that before these nerfs. No way a low mobility class was going to be able to do that. So I'm glad she was changed. I'm glad the knockback and the damage increase from Agamar has been changed. Absolutely, these were all good changes and necessary for Antorus. I'm glad Blizzard eventually did them. Hope, hope they do the same with some of the BFA raids, like the uh, the MCs despawning the boss or damage reductions. But we'll have to wait and see. Anyways, guys, I do hope this guide helped you. Throw it a like if you liked it. Sub to the channel if you like the content. And as usual, guys, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will do my best to answer any questions. Don't always get to all of them, but I do my best. And remember, Halo 3, best Halo. Fact. It just is. Nobody can change that. It is what it is, guys. All right, guys. Until next time. Bye-bye.